wonderful. Uh, so this is the uh, preparatory uh, webinar for the, the second Intoxicom uh, workshop. Um, Welcome everyone. Um, I'm happy you're all here. Uh, we have the following things on the schedule. Um, uh, we have uh, six points, a uh, short introduction for the people uh, new to the toxicology community and in Toxicom. Um, uh, I'll give a brief summary of what we did in workshop one. Uh, I will point to a report made of that so you can read uh, read on that uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, yeah, in your own time uh, later. Okay, so on, uh, on the next slide, uh, there's the outline of the thing. Uh, so for the workshop two, we, uh, I'll outline the, the program. Uh, we do a get to know each other uh, with, with everyone here so everyone can say uh, what their interest is in this workshop, who they are, what their background is, possibly what project they're working on. Um, I have two slides about uh, uh, the BioHacker Archive uh, reporting that we, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll come to that later. And at the end, <clears throat> an, an, an pre announcement for the workshop in, uh, in me, March. I have to do it. Forgive me, I will do it again. Uh, I'll copy paste the, the link uh, to the notes in the chat because uh, I don't have to share my screen right now. So the link is there. Um, <clears throat> so uh, on the next slide, uh, 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 well, actually, the second next slide is an, uh, a brief overview, a reminder of the toxicology community. So the toxicology community was uh, was started about uh, one and a half, two years ago. It actually goes back uh, uh, a couple of years before that, we started doing things uh, quite a bit time uh, already. The whole uh, process of setting up the toxicology and writing the white paper uh, was a bit of a lengthy process, uh, but you will see in this white paper what is the context of this Intoxicom workshop, because this uh, workshop um, uh, is, uh, is sort of an implementation study, but it actually implements the idea proposed in this white paper of communicating the toxicology world with the elixir world and, uh, and, and finding the overlap. And there are many examples of that in this, uh, uh, in this white paper and in this uh, Toxicom uh, implementation study. Uh, we, we picked that, uh, some of that up. Uh, the images here uh, are of the coordination team of uh, the toxicology community. So uh, me, Marvin, uh, Rob, and uh, Karin, uh, we're the toxicologist in this uh, this uh, this group. Uh, so we uh, yeah we, we we try to make things uh, uh, make things work. And uh, Katarina here is from the Elixir Hub. Uh, she, she she helps us with uh, with a lot of organizational things, but also with advice on how to do things. So she gave a lot of advice, for example, and a lot of help with writing the implementation study proposal. Um, yeah. So uh, on the next slide uh, is just a uh, graphical uh, a view of uh, yeah of, of Elixir. Um, uh, Maike, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so here you can see the various communities, there are quite a few communities, toxicology is one of them, and uh, there are also platforms that do things. Uh, so um, in this implement, so, so connecting the toxicology uh, to Elixir is uh, to, to one hand linking them to other communities uh, for human data, for example, or, uh, uh, or, or uh, research outputs, uh, data management, those kinds of things. It can be any of those communities, but also those platforms. And it's particularly those platforms that we will see back in uh, in the, in, the, in the workshops because they uh, typically uh, coordinate uh, the core data resources, the uh, computational tools, uh, the uh, Elixir country level services, etc. Um, we'll see that in a moment. <clears throat> so then, uh, yeah, on the next uh, two slides, we uh, there is a short introduction of the Intoxicom implementation study and. Um, so uh, here you can find the link to uh, to the webpage that describes the, the proposal and this timeline indicates a bit um, what, uh, yeah, how it is organized. So um, Elixir implementation studies, they give uh, the uh, the communities uh, an, 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 a bit of funding, typically for, uh, for 14 months of uh, funding uh, distributed over the participants uh, in, uh, in an implementation study to implement some of the ideas in the white paper. So for this, uh, for the Intoxicom uh, implementation study, we decided to have to get um, more, uh, more connectivity, more interaction, more activity worked out uh, between the toxicology community and Elixir uh, by using uh, a mechanism of five workshops that follow each other, that, uh, that extend on each other. 
So the first workshop has already happened. That was in May this year. That was about uh, general verification of toxicology research outputs. Uh, a summary of that will uh, I will give in a moment. And uh, we're now uh, at the preparation of workshop two, which is about research output management and how that is implemented. We'll get to in a moment as well. And after this workshop, we have three other wor uh, workshops uh, lined up. So the first next one, workshop three, that will be about uh, uh, computing. Uh, so EOSC is the European Open Science Cloud. And this is an, uh, an, an, a platform for, for computational approaches. So for us, that would be uh, uh, access to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, data analysis of, of uh, um, uh, life sciences data, computational toxicology services, and there are actually there are a lot of lot of technical overlaps between how toxicology projects uh, uh, do computing, like nanosulfate or open risk net before uh, a couple of others, how they how they provide their uh, solutions for toxicology, uh, and uh, how EOS is picking up these things. So that workshop will be about that one. Um, the fourth workshop is about uh, educational resources, and we'll be we'll see a bit of that in this workshop too as well. But again, each workshop they will uh, work on this; they will feed uh, uh, output, but also open uh, open issues into the next workshop. So there is this uh, uh, really this uh, consecutive thing. But like in a good American uh, uh, series, every episode can be watched independently as well. So people do not actually have to join every uh, every work, uh, workshop, but we, we try to have some con continuity. Um, and the fifth workshop, that is probably where everything from the earlier workshops comes together. That is really about how do we do predictive toxicology, uh, not a single model, but really a system biology approach. So, so combining uh, PBPK with adverse outcome pathways with uh, well, all the things that we're, uh, with that we're interesting, uh, interested in. Uh, and that should happen, uh, I think, uh, after summer next year. Um, so the fourth workshop should be just before summer, and then the last uh, last workshop just after summer, so, uh, somewhere. So at the end of um, of this implementation study. Now on the next slide, uh, we're zooming a bit in. So how is uh, how this implementation study organizes that? Uh, per workshop. Um, so that's the, the, the four boxes uh, on the bottom half here. Uh, so we're now at the preparatory uh, webinar. Uh, that is for the registered uh, uh, participants. Uh, that was slightly done differently in the first workshop, which was a bit more uh, open, a bit more general uh, webinar. But we want to give people here in, uh, in this webinar enough room to give feedback on, uh, on, on the workshop because we want to have the workshop really a co-creation thing. We will see a bit more about that. So you're introducing in a moment and your feedback is very much appreciated. So uh, I, I cannot read uh, the, uh, the, co uh, the things being written down already in, uh, in this, uh, that aedu.nl uh, link there for the notes, uh, but please put in there all your ideas, all your comments. So that is the preparatory webinar. And then in two weeks, uh, we have the, the workshop itself. Um, we have invited experts uh, there for, for the teams, which we'll see in a moment as well, and, um, uh, and this, uh, this report at the end. Um, and the last thing is actually is very interesting as well. So, so to, 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 to stress that co-creation thing, so we're going to write up a bit what, what was done at this workshop, what would we create together, uh, and we have the, uh, the opportunity, and we, we haven't done that for the first workshop, but we, uh, we are uh, seriously considering that, uh, is to actually actually write up an, a meeting report based on that uh, on that, uh, that that report that we have uh, have done earlier um, so that is that bit and if you combine that with uh, with the timeline on the next slide uh, you can see uh, yeah the whole uh, the whole workflow so you have the preparatory webinars around the workshop uh, next one uh, we add the uh, the reporting you, you, will, you will see uh, on the next slide actually that uh, that there is uh, there are multiple um, uh, Maike, uh, on the next slide, please. Uh, multiple reports uh, mentioned there, uh, um, uh, but there's, there's only one biohack archive, but there are multiple uh, uh, outputs that we will see. 
And in orange there, the orange report, that is the implementation uh, report. So we have a midterm report that we have to send to the Elixir Hub and a final report. And that, it, uh, that uh, is basically in combination of the uh, individual reports and uh, taken care of by, um, uh, by the Intoxicom coordinators. Um, and um, finally, about this, uh, uh, this, this Intoxicom, on the next slide, you can see a bit how everything links together, and particularly with the, with the platforms. So you see the flow of work package one about uh, verification that is linked to, uh, to the interoperability platform, the data platform, and then work package two takes, takes up that uh, and links that to the training platform, work, uh, work Package four is around uh, work, is organizing the workshop four. That is really about the training platform, but it will of course uh, uh, mention a lot of data solutions and computational solutions and and, and tools and sorts uh, from from the earlier work packages and um, and um, yeah and 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 three what I said already EOSC. Uh, really for linking to the compute platform and the tools platform of Elixir, and then five basically to everything. Um, I, I realized that in this uh, this diagram, um, there is no link between work package five and training platform, but uh, it, it should be obvious that uh, without training, people will not be uh, uh, will not have enough guidance in uh, uh, doing the system biology with all these new tools. Um, any questions at this moment before I go into uh, so about uh, uh, either the uh, toxicology community about Elixir or about Intoxicom? Because after that we move on to uh, to workshop one. Okay, um, no questions. Good. Then uh, then let's go to uh, to workshop one. So workshop one is uh, is organized by uh, was or was organized by uh, uh, by Marvin, who uh, is probably not here because uh, uh, he was uh, he he was reported ill this morning. Uh, and Penny and Isult Isult is here. Uh, Penny is not, I think. Uh, so 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 Isult, if I'm forgetting anything, uh, please just jump in. Uh, and supported by uh, by Mike Bungner from Hell to Rye. Uh, Hell to Rye is also the uh, hosting the uh, the Dutch Elixir node, uh, and uh, from the coordination team, uh, me and Rob uh, and Thomas was involved there, and uh, Dominic and uh, Karel from uh, from Czechia, and Dominic is here as well. Yes, he is, um, as well as uh, Thomas actually. So, so that was the organizer, and the first workshop was about verification of toxicology, uh, toxicological uh, research output, and the rationale you can see on the next slide, uh, which was around well, the toxicology research, of course, uh, is very important. Uh, we want this to be fair. Uh, we see this back, for example, in the park project, but in both projects, uh, really, um, also in the uh, in the European um, and safety cluster and sorts, uh, because we want to enhance research value um, and uh, so there is this, uh, this, 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 this notion that it's not just the toxicology experiments the research data there but it is also all the context around that uh, that is important and this needs to be uh, reusable and that requires the other uh, aspects of there um, and a lot has been done there uh, uh, but uh, not in a sufficient harmonized way and um, so that is what uh, what the toxicology community started out doing many years ago, uh, and projects like uh, like like Park and others uh, have really picked up. Uh, <clears throat> so you will actually see in in the results uh, of of this uh, 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 this first workshop uh, how all the, uh, the, the the yeah how all uh, uh, how much is contributed by all the toxicology projects. Uh, um, on the next slide, you can see uh, how the workshop was organized. So this is this is content also from uh, from the proposal of the uh, of uh, um, of the Intoxicom um, uh, implementation study, and uh, we picked up two parts here. So the workshops are organized as a two day uh, event. Uh, and uh, uh, with with one or more uh, topics, and we had two parts. So we defined uh, two parts here. So one was focusing on fair solutions for toxic uh, toxicology databases. So if you look at the Elixir core resources, there is uh, a lot about uh, general. Um, 
uh, general life sciences data, so Ensemble, Uniprot is there. Uh, uh, there, is a part, there are pathway databases in Elixir, uh, but there is not that much about toxicology there. Uh, in fair sharing, multiple resources are getting registered, but these are not under the hood of Elixir yet. Uh, we might be able to change that if we make a compelling argument uh, to Elixir. Uh, but there are a lot of solutions uh, uh, provided by uh, by uh, Elixir, uh, and not just by Elixir. Uh, so cross sharing those uh, uh, cross sharing those instances is of interest. Um, um, let's see. Uh, so that was that, that. That is part two, and then part two. Uh, sorry, part one and part two of this was uh, the adverse outcome pathways, because that is an, something that a lot of projects do. Um, uh, that is also something that in the Netherlands uh, we, uh, we we worked a lot, so it was easier to bring in. It is uh, it is open data. Uh, so. Um, Picking that uh, served an immediate need for at least some of the toxicology projects that have been involved in writing the implementation study. So making uh, making adverse outcome pathways more fair, that was the second thing. Now, how that was translated into the workshop, uh, the first workshop is shown on this. Uh, the second slide, this is a list of present presentations uh, of the meeting. Um, uh, thank you. Um, so we had an, uh, a general introduction to Elixir. I gave some of that now as well. Uh, we had a short introduction of the Elixir toxicology uh, community uh, from from Marvin, and then we went into the uh, 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 into the toxicology part with presentation from Isol, from Rob, uh, Penny, uh, Clemens Witwer from the JRC, uh, and Ulrike Wittig from the data platform. So one of the platforms of Elixir. Um, uh, as you can see here, also there are references behind uh, these presentations. So this uh, table is actually one of the tables of the report uh, from the first, first workshop uh, that we'll show on the next uh, slide. And many of the uh, the presentations have been archived, uh, so have been made fair, and you can download them. Mm -hmm. So if you look up this uh, biohack archive report that you see on screen right now. Um, <clears throat> Uh, in that report, uh, you will find a lot of a uh, lot of this information from uh, from the results of that, including the uh, the presentations. Um, so, what what makes this uh, uh, this biohack archive uh, uh, interesting here is well, it is it, because it is it is a solution from uh, from from Elixir, or at least uh, Elixir is using it. On, uh, uh, it, it relates to the uh, the biohack hackathon events, and it was set up as an as a place where reports from these biohackathons uh, could take place and we teamed up with uh, uh, with them um, for the um, um, for the on, on to, in toxicom workshop so that we could, uh, we could uh, uh, post our reports there uh, that means that we get a DOI, uh, uh, we get a nice formatting as we can see there we get exposure via uh, via biohack archive uh, etc so uh, on the next slide, uh, you can see the uh, results as written up. Uh, I, I hope everyone can, can read this, uh, uh, otherwise you will have to follow the link to the report. But what you can see here is uh, is, is the two, uh, two aspects. So verification, there was one aspect, and uh, a fair implementation profiles, uh, which I did not mention, but that was, that was, that was part of uh, how to do these things. So how do we make things fair? Can we write that? Can we write up these recipes, these, these uh, this documents? implementation for so that everyone can adopt it and uh, the fair implementation uh, profiles that is something that uh, that comes up in a couple of projects that uh, park particularly uh, those describe uh, the choices of an of a sub community in toxicology what they uh, uh, what they use for a global unique identifier for standards being adopted for formats and and, and what's not um, and uh, and the recipes, the fair cookbook recipes on the left side of this slide, those are recipes. They're basically describing how you do uh, one of the verification steps. So we in the end, we ended up, uh, uh, so these, these, these are five things that were created or started to be created at this workshop. So really reflecting that co-creation. And we had uh, three uh, recipes, one about uh, 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 key events uh, in AOP Wiki, uh, how you can uh, describe that better, uh, one about metadata of cell-based assays and one about uh, setting up uh, a, a, a fair way of sharing uh, uh, imaging based on confocal uh, screening. 
Uh, you can see the hack, uh, hack and D IO links there. So those are actually the recipes. And in, uh, in the next workshop, we were actually going to look at, so we've written recipes right now. How do we submit that to the fair cookbook? What is involved there? How was the, does the reviewing process uh, work there? And we did have someone from the editorial board in the first workshop, uh, uh, but so far uh, there are no, uh, considerable drafts uh, uh, of these recipes, uh, but they haven't been uh, formally submitted to the cookbook uh, or, or uh, and that's what we want to get published in the fair cookbook. Okay, um, then an, a, a more uh, personal impression of, of the workshop uh, you can see on the next uh, next slide. Uh, so here we see some uh, uh, two speakers uh, in action, uh, Marvin, uh, Penny, and then Marvin again, and an impression of the people uh, people in the audience. Uh, you can see that we were with what is it, uh, 15, 17 people here uh, on this uh, on this uh, oh, yeah, and, uh, and and one online speaker in the background. Um, um, and uh, it looks like the Basel meeting uh, will be about uh, about the same size uh, of this. And uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, not everyone that signed up is here uh, uh, right now, uh, but I'm really looking forward. Um, so because workshop two is extending on workshop one uh, for, for, for parts of it, uh, I again want to ask the questions. Are there any questions about this part of the, uh, uh, of, of, yeah, of the summary? Uh, for the people that were there, did I forget anything important? Or less important? Okay. If, if, if not, let's let's go to the... A really nice summary, Egon. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, nice dinner. That was nice too. <laughs> Just... Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not on the picture, but... And not not no, indeed, but, but you know, no, but very important for the for the for the networking. Yeah, yeah, and we will have a dinner uh, in the next meeting as well because again, uh, uh, we'll have a uh, workshop that runs from uh, 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 from uh, around eleven o'clock uh, on uh, on the first day. Uh, that's when we start the program, so people are uh, welcome for coffee a bit earlier uh, until three o'clock on the second day. Um, um, so yeah, let's go there. Uh, the, this workshop is organized by uh, me and, uh, and Daniel. Uh, Daniel is here as well, I think. Uh, yes, hi Daniel. Um, we uh, used to be from two different uh, departments uh, actually, but as of September 1st, uh, we're, uh, we're both of the, the Department of Translational Genomics. So we're direct uh, colleagues uh, right now. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the co-organizers uh, are Thomas uh, uh, and uh, I, uh, She was soliciting the proposal as well. Uh, she will not be able to come to Basel, uh, but I'm hoping that, uh, that, that she can contribute in some way. And Gente Howley, uh, who is a PhD candidate and who's also here, hi, uh, um, uh, who is doing a lot of rounds uh, verification in a uh, Dutch uh, toxicology project called VHP for Safety. Um, on the next slide uh, is the map from Basel, Basel with a Z. Uh, uh, it looks like, uh, uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm skipping a slide. Ah, sorry, my bad. Um, I was too fast. So, what did the proposal write about this uh, this thing? So, what's the rationale of this uh, this uh, this workshop? So, uh, read across is a common approach in toxicology and governance. Uh, so, we need uh, we need data. Uh, existing knowledge uh, complements uh, costly data generation. Uh, so, this is the 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 the, the gap filling. Uh, 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 the use of uh, uh, of QSR and nano QSR models. Uh, <clears throat> Um, or uh, yeah, using knowledge from, uh, from 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 other sources. So getting all that information together. Um, so therefore, uh, this whole verification process, being able to find it, to find the documents, the narratives, the data, uh, the images, uh, what's not, uh, software that can predict the tools that can predict uh, something specifically for your material, how do you find that? So that verification process that really needs to apply to all research output and not just, uh, 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 not, we, we should not just talk about fair data, but we need to talk about fair research output. Um, 
so that that is that is that is really what we're pushing in this uh, this uh, uh, this implementation study uh, and the workshops uh, follow that. Um, um, the third, I'm sorry, the fourth rationale workshop by this work package support toxicology projects. Um, um, let's skip that one. I'm not entirely. I don't. I do not remember the exact uh, context of that. But of course, it should uh, it should really support the planning toxicology projects. Uh, but that it does. And in that respect, it is really uh, worthwhile to have a look at the uh, the list of authors and the list of funders of the uh, of, of the report of the first workshop. It gives you a good, a good idea of the uh, uh, yeah of the, of the various toxicology uh, project that are already uh, uh, trying to find that synergy. Um, so what we're going to look at in this workshop is, for example, the data share with Wizard, uh, the EDAM ontology we will see pass by, we will not work that much on it, but the EDAM ontology is very much used in the Elixir toxicology to make uh, the various solutions in, uh, in Elixir align with each other. It allows us to link uh, data and, uh, and tools to training material, for example. Um, Populating Elixir registries like uh, BioTools or fair sharing with all those toxicology solutions that we are developing in the toxicology community. At this moment, I my estimate would be that at maybe five ten percent of all the toxicology solutions are actually registered in in Elixir, uh, uh, and that should uh, should get higher. Uh, so that that is a continuing thing. So um, now we go to the map of Basel. Um, in uh, uh, and my Google Maps uh, picked up uh, German uh, this morning. I, I, I think because we see Basel. What is that? Um, but the red uh, the red marker uh, just left of the city center uh, of uh, Basel. That is uh, that is uh, the venue. If I did not uh, get fooled by uh, uh, by Google Maps, that should be the uh, the main building uh, uh, of the University of Basel at Peterplatz uh, uh, Eins uh, in Basel. So that is where we uh, where we are. So very close to the to the old city and i've been to basel a couple of times myself and it's a really really nice place um it's a bit zoomed out i could have zoomed in and then you could have seen more map of uh, of the old city but in the top right you see actually the train station uh, so that is the other nice thing about about basel it's uh, it's, it's quite well connected um, and i will be arriving actually by train from the netherlands uh, at uh, basel bad uh, bahnhof um, and i have a hotel somewhere in between the venue and uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 the train station um, if people have questions about how to get to Basel or hotel recommendations, we did get hotel recommendations from uh, 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 from from uh, University of Basel. Uh, so, so please, uh, if you have questions, please uh, email me or Maike or or both of us, and we can help for those who haven't booked yet. Um, let's see. Uh, how are we doing in time? It's just past four. Uh, we have most of the well, we, um, we have some of the slides there left. Uh, so, what does do the two parts on the next slide? Uh, what do the two parts of the program look like here? Uh, so, again, from the proposal, uh, and you can see the uh, the uh, more or less the uh, the tilde in front of the uh, of of the two part titles, and I added that deliberately because in the proposal, um, uh, making research output more fair, and particularly the, the introduction of the fair cookbook recipe concept. Well, that was actually in the end already done for. A good bit in uh, uh, in uh, in the first workshop, uh, so um, um, we will continue that. But it has a lesser uh, lesser importance because we already did part of that. Uh, so on um, in the workshop, we will focus on the existing fair cookbooks from yeah, those uh, reported in uh, in the uh, in the report. But uh, we will also for the new people who weren't there in the first workshop still give a quick uh, a quick rundown of what it is uh, uh, that. An, a fair cookbook uh, uh, recipe looks like what it does at sorts uh, to give some focus, <clears throat> which is important for the whole submission process anyway, and for the people who weren't there in the first workshop during the session. Uh, by looking at the previous uh, cookbook recipes, you get a very quick, uh, quick idea of uh, of what, uh, how 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 to write a recipe uh, and propose that uh, uh, to the fair cookbook uh, itself. Um, 
One thing that we might do uh, during uh, during the Basel workshop is actually uh, identify uh, recipes that we want as well. So one of the outputs of this workshop can be uh, wish lists, so things that we think we should have that we recommend to the toxicology community to develop uh, uh, in, 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 in the, the, the regular funded projects, for example. So uh, co-creation can also be writing down things that we need urgently. Um, the second part, uh, and I'm, I'm really happy about that because we, uh, I already mentioned, we need to verify much more research, uh, re much more research output, many different, many more different types of research output. And we need support for that. And the Data Steward Wizard, uh, that is a tool uh, developed by, uh, uh, by uh, well, I, I'm not sure if it's developed originally by Elixir, but I, I know it from Elixir. Uh, Christoph uh, is uh, is here. Uh, he's one of the uh, the experts of uh, um, uh, of the Data Steward Wizard, and uh, uh, we invited him to come to Basel. Uh, maybe you can uh, say a bit about uh, the Data Steward Wizard, if you like. Right. Uh, good afternoon. Um, it's called Data Steward Wizard. That's the first thing I wanted to say. I don't okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a tool primarily used to create data management plans. And originally, if I remember correctly, it was developed as a part of a master thesis of my colleagues, and then it became kind of uh, interconnected with Elixir, and it was ever since. Um, and I've been working with them for three years now, and I mostly focus on doing trainings and and other stuff with with people using the wizard, so taking some feedback and, and proposing new features, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that's yeah. That. Apologies yeah, about that. Uh, hopefully, I will be coming to to Basel. Yeah. 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 I I, I sincerely yeah. hope so. Um. Um, uh, yeah, apologies about the name. That is that is a risk of uh, of uh, uh, um, uh, of, of acronyms. Uh, but I, I I learned it like that. Uh, I because I learned about the tool. Uh, uh, mostly via uh, Rob Hoft, who has been involved in it at some point. Um, and for me, the context was always uh, uh, yeah, a, a way uh, to write up, uh, 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 well, the, the templating aspect, a way to write up uh, uh, how to ask people about uh, the things that are important for FAIR around data. So that is that is where that, uh, um, uh, uh, that, that mistake came from. And uh, the idea now is to, and uh, yeah, we're, we're going to explore that in the workshop. Is can we use these templates to also write up, uh, uh, write up an, a process where people can work through what are the fair things that we need for different kinds of output? So, for example, what are all the things that you need to think about when making a training material fair? Uh, and we'll have a whole session about that uh, 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 that we'll see about in a moment. Uh, uh, but there are so many things. So. How how do we make a Docker image uh, uh, fair? How do we make um, an, an, an API fair? Uh, how do we now nah, all, all the kind of things that that we need that we need for the interoperability between uh, the various toxicology projects? We need to make those things fair, and we need good templates of that. It helps us, and it links to, for example, the fair implementation profiles. We're documenting what are the things that we need to write down so that these tools provide us sort of a checklist. Um, yeah, and then for the ontological an annotation, we can use the EDEM uh, ontology uh, um, uh, where things are not registered. We can register an Elixir platforms. Um, and uh, yeah, and so so we, yeah, we're going to create templates, uh, ideally for things like uh, scientific models. That's what the proposal wrote. So then you can think about uh, the adverse outcome pathways, which we looked at uh, in uh, workshop one already, uh, PVPK models or QSR models, uh, um, uh, or the software behind those things. So the scientific models, there the, uh, uh, um, um, the the scientific uh, predictive uh, computational explanation, and the software is that runs. Uh, those, uh, those things. Okay, then on the next slide, we see very practical. You see some question marks, uh, marks there, uh, because the program uh, is uh, getting pretty final. So the outline is uh, of, of the various topics is uh, final, uh, but the uh, exact list of uh, session chairs and speakers is not. And for example, uh, for the for the DS Wizard uh, template building, we see some uh, some some ideas for. Um, 
for the scientific models, but that is still uh, still a bit a uh, bit open. But you can see the start time, 11 o'clock on November 27. Uh, uh, the uh, what you can expect from that uh, that session uh, when the lunch uh, lunch is, uh, and we will share a document with uh, where, where this will be provided in detail. And then in the afternoon we have the session from uh, from Sarah. Um, now on the end of trading material, uh, the dinner at the, uh, in the evening, and then the next morning we start at nine o'clock with uh, verification of uh, uh, scientific uh, models, uh, some uh, some introduction to that, uh, what we have been doing there, what are possibilities. Uh, we, we have some leverage from what was done, for example, in VHP for safety. But if someone else here in this uh, in this audience uh, uh, has a good suggestion on uh, uh, on on a project that is doing similar things, uh, that is most uh, most welcome as well. Um, the workshop, uh, uh, yeah, the second lunch, uh, and then the, uh, the, the final uh, uh, workshop is about sharing metadata, and I will show a bit there what we have been doing in Safe by Design for Nana, uh, Nano, and uh, Christian, uh, uh, our community champion from, uh, from Fair Sharing. Uh, I don't think he's here right now, uh, but he, uh, he, uh, he will be able to give an, an, an update on uh, the Fair Sharing um, uh, and and see uh, and I will show how 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 we have been using as uh, it's safe by design for now the uh, the metadata there. So that gives us the four teams on the next uh, next slide and um, uh, very quickly and um, uh, I would like to give uh, Sarah the floor now um, uh, who. Um, who is the expert for uh, for the training material uh, and uh, who has uh, two slides uh, about uh, her session. Uh, so, Sarah? Thank you, Egon, um, and thank you for the introduction. Um, so, basically, the purpose of having this workshop, especially in the research, uh, this session in the research output management workshop, is um, it's kind of introducing you to the training material as one of the research outputs. And as you may know already in the different funding call, um, training material is considered now as a research output. And of course, the second purpose of this session is um, try to understand the toxicology community needs in terms of the um, training materials, uh, in terms of the formats they're using, and that can help the co-production for the workshop four, which is focused okay. on uh, on the training. So it will basically um, helping us understand your needs and helping us uh, develop a more tailored uh, workshop. So uh, in this session, we have, um, a, a, basically, a, a start. The start of the session it will be focused on how to verify the toxicology training. So introducing introducing you to the fair principles um, for the training material, um, and of course it it will not dive deep into the technical stuff because as I've said we want to make it tailored um, tailored approach. So this one this session will be more general. Uh, overview of uh, the FAIR principle, um, how to use different um, bioschemas, uh, the current metadata models, and of course we will, um, I, I'll give you a kind of introduction to something called learning bath, which um, which one of the things that can help you for um, when you have um, kind of new training material or have um, that you want to be kind of reused or, or involved in other um, learners uh, learning pathway. So um, I will introduce you to the way how to develop that. Uh, and of course, during the process, I will introduce you to some of the Elixir resources that you can use to make your um, training material as part of your research output fair and how it can be linked to um, other Elixir resources that is focused on the ontologies, the data, mo the data and models um, and softwares. Um, so next slide. Thank you. So um, the workshop um, is is basically split into two parts. So uh, the first part is bring your training material. Um, of course, I would understand if someone doesn't want to bring it your training material or don't have one yet. So we will have examples for you. But of course, it would be better if you bring uh, the training materials that you have. Um, and we will have um, kind of hands-on exercises on how to apply the FAIR principle. Um, we will have also um, kind of um, beginner exercise on how to uh, annotate uh, the training materials, how to use different um, Elixir training platform resources like TESS. Um, and then of course, uh, some of the meta models that we can also um, try to use on, on different training material. Um, as I've said, the purpose of this workshop is introducing you to the verification of training as a part of research output, but also it, it lays the ground for the workshop four, which is focused on 
um, the certification of, of training. So the second part of the workshop will be focused on, it will be basically interactive brainstorming session. Um, based on the knowledge that you had during the, this session, we want to hear from you. Uh, what do you think of the verification of training material? Is it something doable? Is there specific challenges that you found, especially during your practice um, or as a, as a member of uh, toxicology communities that you think uh, will make it easier for you or will make it better for you? So, um, and of course, we will expand this to include also the data because training is usually linked with with um, with the software or the data standards and data models. So we can actually um, uh, kind of your your answer to this question or the brainstorming session will help us co-produce something uh, for the workshop four, which will be more tailored uh, for the needs of the toxicology community. Um, and of course, we will uh, dive deep into the learning uh, pathways for the learners. So um, the learning pathway would be if you have a new postdoc, if you have a new PhD student, um, and you want them want to train them on on a specific data model or specific new uh, software, then we would envision what what a, a usual kind of BI in toxicology field what they would need um, to to train uh, their their. Um, students. So it will be the second part is basically for um, it, it, it. We will hear you. So we would know how to uh, co-create the workshop for. Um, so, yeah, that's all about the this session on the verification of training material. Yeah, thank you. Um, questions to Sara? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very much looking forward uh, to this uh, to this session. I've been making uh, training material in uh, two or three projects now uh, available via TES. Uh, I have some experience with it. A bit longer ago, uh, uh, we we used bio schemas for for training material, and I'm I'm really looking forward where uh, where 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 we are with all this and how we can integrate that more also in uh, indeed in in what you say in the uh, in the tra the training of the next generation toxicologist. How we can uh, leverage from uh, from open educational resources and training material from other projects and sorts. So, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there are no questions to uh, to Sara, let's go to the uh, to the round table, and uh, I would like to invite everyone, uh, and I'll. Um, I'll go from the participant list uh, from the top, uh, in, uh, introducing uh, who they are uh, and uh, uh, yeah, um, why you're joining the, uh, the, the 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 workshop and what you try to get out of that. Um, uh, this is a question, perhaps uh, looking at the list, uh, Mike and David, uh, David, uh, David is hosting this. Uh, he was there in the first workshop, if not mistaken. Um, David, are you going to join the next workshop or are you just here to host uh, this the webinar? I'm just here to host unless you need me to. I don't think I contributed very much other than a brief introduction last time. No, and uh, and uh, we can cover uh, cover it. Uh, I, I was wondering. Uh, so, but um, yeah. So David is from uh, from Elixir. Uh, he's helping uh, helping with the webinars. Uh, but he, he did give a uh, presentation in the first uh, session. Um, okay. Uh, next on my list is uh, Karin. So I'm Karin Oduz. I'm <coughs> professor in bioinformatics at the University of Paris City, and I'm very much involved in this Elixir toxicology community. I won't be there, unfortunately, for the workshop, but uh, I hope to be able to join the next one. I mean, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Robin. Hi. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello. My name is Robin. I'm a first year PhD student in Ludek Blahas group from Russia Tox uh, Masaryk University in Brno, Czech Republic. Uh, my main focus currently is on development of quantitative AOPs, and my current focus is on data mining and data evaluation. I come from an experimental background, but I'm currently transitioning to this data science, so I'm looking forward to this workshop. And actually, we are also setting up a supervision with Karin Adus, so we haven't met in person yet, but hopefully soon. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Antonio. Yeah. 
Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, as well as Robin, uh, I'm a first year student at the Environmental Health Science uh, PhD program in Masaryk University in Berna, Czech Republic. And I'm working in an another group, uh, Pavel Badiksa's group. And I'm working with, uh, with uh, the chemical risk assessment of several uh, chemicals. And having as uh, having the gap junctions disruption as the main uh, endpoint, and we we want to to, to analyze another key event uh, in the tumorigenesis uh, process. And well, I would like to learn more about the, the building up uh, birds outcome pathways and. And also to apply this to, to my project and, and just to learn how to use these uh, informatic tools to, to develop this, uh, to, uh, this, this pathway. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to. Thank you. Um, uh, Christoph. Yeah, that would be me again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Right. Um, so, um, as I said, I've, I'm part of the DSW team for three years doing the trainings. Um, and what I would probably do is tell you something about the DS, DSW when first I will probably need to learn a little bit um, about your background, maybe your knowledge about, about the tool so I can uh, better adjust everything that I, that I need to say in order for you to understand what I will be speaking about later. And uh, then what I want to present to everyone uh, is how you can create different the different, different <coughs> templates to generate different outputs from the TSW. Um, as I say in that the time uh, allocated for this is around three hours. Um, I will probably not be able to get deep uh, into anything, but to present just a slight overview and, and like every possibility, but not in, in, a, in a great detail. So that, that's my plan. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Gerard? Hi, also, uh, also I can't join the next meeting, unfortunately, but I hope to be there uh, the next one, but uh, several people from Leiden are joining, I think. So, so I all hope they'll update me. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you were uh, in the first workshop and you uh, presented there uh, a bit, uh, or you were one of the experts around the FAIR implementation profiles, uh, for example. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Sarah, do you want to uh, say uh, a bit more? Uh, or? Um, yes, hi everyone, I'm, I'm Sarah Mercy, so I'm basically a um, member of the training platform, so I would introduce you to the training, the verification of training, and work with you on that. Um, yeah, I'm, my research overlap with toxicology, because part of my research is also focused on environmental and exposome, um, and I think I would be definitely a member of the, the toxicology community moving forward. Yeah, so nice to meet you all. Yep, thank you. Yenta? Yes, hello everyone. So I'm Jente, I'm a PhD student and data steward at the RVM, uh, which is a Dutch National Institute. Uh, and I'm mostly focused on <coughs> making experimental data generated in VHP for safety more fair. And during the workshop, I would like to learn how to leverage the previously mentioned tools and see how we can integrate those in our project. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, Dominic. Hello everyone, I'm a PhD student from uh, Aplatsky University Olomouc in Czech Republic. Uh, my background is in uh, bioinformatics and uh, I mainly focus on uh, data, uh, chemical and biological data integration via ontologies, semantic web and similar things. I'm not going to be at the workshop itself but uh maybe maybe next time no yeah and uh, and dominic is at this moment visiting uh, scientists uh, in our group at maastricht university 
Um, let's see. Um, Thomas, uh, you're the next on my list. Okay, quick introduction. Um, yeah, I'm representing here a couple of projects for safe and sustainable by design of advanced materials, long words and, and complicated words. But I think it's clear that toxicology is, is part of that. Um, and and this, we we are personally our my small company is is doing data management and and software integration therefore fair is is huge importance for everything we are doing and i i hope we can get new ideas and and knowledge from this workshop thank you um uh, is it Uh, can you hear me, Isolt? Okay, uh, she's probably, uh, we'll be right back. Uh, next one, uh, Daniel. Hello, everybody. Yes, Egon mentions I'm a colleague of his from the department of computer and genomics. I'm a social professor there. Um, and I'm involved in, in, in data management and, and several projects, um, working with different templates ready for years in the toxicology uh, community working on, 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 on different templates mostly related to omics yeah and i hope to facilitate and, and help wherever i can during the the workshop and, and bring this to the next level yep thank you um uh, Sandaria. hi can you hear me yep to meet you i'm sandaria i'm a master student probably i'll be the one of only one master student in this group but i unfortunately i couldn't able to work, come to the workshop but i would really attend the next one so i study chemical innovation and regulation as a part of it i have involved in the uh, toxicology studies and i would really help to know what are the tools in this toxicology studies and how to integrate with the software and everything but I couldn't able to attend, so nice to meet you all. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so uh, I haven't really introduced myself, so quick word about me. Uh, I'm a chemist in origin. Uh, I've uh, I have a PhD in multivariate statistics, uh, but for that you need uh, need data, you need knowledge. Uh, uh, so this is how I ended up in uh, in in in, uh, in in data. Uh, uh, data handling in general and data analysis. Uh, so that's my background. I've been involved in a couple of project analysis safety cluster, uh, 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 but also in projects in, in metabolomics or anything where uh, the chemistry uh, uh, touches on the biology. That is uh, where my interest is, uh, is in. Um, so I'm not so sure if Isolt is, uh, is back, but she's professor at the University of Birmingham. Uh, she's involved in, uh, in, in, in projects like PARC, and previously uh, she has been coordinating a number of projects in the nanosafety cluster, which is how, uh, how we know each other. Uh, and uh, when she's back, uh, she might add, uh, add some bits uh, to that. Uh, I, uh, did I forget uh, anyone? Uh, I think I have everyone. Um, I, I will just briefly introduce myself then. Oh. <laughs> No worries, no worries. No, 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 no worries. I just thought it could, it's, it's good for you to know me as well. Uh, I'm Mike yes. Luna. I'm, uh, I'm the community uh, manager at Healthry. But Egon, you already told uh, that, so that's, that's, that's fine. Um, I'm working in the life science uh, with different life science communities in the Netherlands and, and also internationally. Um, so what I do in my work is I try to cross boundaries uh, concerning research areas. Um, I try to learn a lot from toxicology people, but I'm coming from nutrition. So I've done nutrition or nutri genomics. That's what we called it and still call it. Um, I worked with the food and nutrition community from Elixir. Um, I also have um, a background in metabolomics, and I'm working with the uh, Netherlands Metabolomics Center uh, and with NUGO. I'm not sure you know that, but that's an association of, of different, um, of 30 international um, uh, uh, institutes working on precision nutrition, personalized nutrition, and a bit systems biology. 
I have to work on my pitch, I know, but I at least, you know, I like to learn as well. So I'll learn a lot uh, during the meeting. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, these workshops, uh, uh, they uh, would not go as smoothly uh, uh, without your effort. Uh, uh, so um, uh, I, I feel really embarrassed that, that somewhere in the list uh, it, it swapped to something and I... Uh, oh, don't be, don't be. <laughs> Not, not at all necessary. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, okay, uh, to to everyone. Uh, so I also indicated uh, this co-creation thing. So uh, maybe, uh, Maika, you can go just quickly back to slide twenty-four and put that on the uh, on the screen. Is there any? Uh, I, I haven't been able to to look at the uh, at the minutes uh, minutes document so far. So is there any any feedback or questions or ideas based on uh, on this outline uh, that anyone wants to give? No, okay, um, uh, and it may come uh, come come later, uh, so you can always uh, always bring it up uh, uh, later. And it, it is also a bridge to the next item, so that would be on slide thirty, uh, which is about the uh, the reporting. Um, is that this one? Yeah, uh, thirty thirty one. Uh, so, like in workshop one, uh, we will write a report like this, um, and that report looks like what we see on screen right now. Um, so, uh, it, the, re the report is uh, is a is a markdown file. The markdown will get translated <laughs> into the noise uh, uh, noise PDF, uh, like we saw on the previous uh, slide. Um, and while this uh, uh, report writes on the, the, well, what we did on that day, uh, we already know the team, so there might already be a, a number of... Uh, uh, thanks, Christoph. I uh, hope to see you soon. Um, while we cannot report about the results of it, we can already uh, uh, start writing bits about uh, references that we want to mention uh, as an introduction to the various topics. Uh, you can look at the uh, at the first report. Uh, you will see there is an introduction there as well. Part of that, what we see on the screen here. Um, and everyone uh, participating in this workshop uh, per ideas of the implementation study is is part of the co-creation process uh, so everyone is invited to be uh, to be co-author on, uh, on 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 the on the, uh, on, on the preprint uh, so uh, even uh, uh, yeah, even if your contribution may feel uh, uh, less than you would expect from being a co-author uh, this is a workshop report, and everyone contributed to all the discussion. So everyone is in, invited, even if you've written less of the text of the uh, of, of the manuscript. I'm, I really want to stress that, because at some point we will ask all the participants uh, that, that were there at the workshop. Uh, or participating in the, in the, in the webinar, uh, their approval to be listed as co-author per publishing, uh, uh, modern publishing uh, ethics and morals. Um, <clears throat> so, so be aware of that and then realize that it's not about the uh, amount of uh, text you wrote for the report, but about your involvement in the workshop itself. Um, we will come to that, and uh, you, you can see the markdown here. Maybe you looked at the details a bit. Uh, there's an, uh, the link here uh, at the bottom uh, to the PARC website, for example. In the first paragraph of the introduction, uh, there are citations to, uh, to, uh, to references. You will see some uh, citation annotation uh, there. So for the um, the first uh, reference here to uh, Martin's 2023 Elixir, uh, we see that this reference is cited as a recommended reading to the reader of this report. And uh, references can have uh, citation typing uh, annotation uh, uh, like this, and we will use that probably as well. At the top, you can see the kind of information, the metadata for the workshop, and a bit about the evaluations of everyone. and. Uh, um, uh, and uh, I also want to stress that you will not necessarily have to learn Markdown. It's not that complicated, uh, but everyone can just provide text, uh, uh, their contributions to the writing in plain text as well. And the organization of the Intoxicom implementation study will, uh, uh, will apply Markdown where applicable. Think of that like uh, as the typesetting of the document. Um, 
So yeah, this is uh, this is basically just a heads up that there will be this report, uh, but also this joint responsibility during the workshop that we have to take enough no notes uh, and uh, of, of everything uh, uh, that we can write uh, this workshop report. Um, any questions about that uh, that part? Because it, it, it is a formal deliverable that we have to uh, provide to the Elixir uh, Hub, so it is kind of important for the uh, for the organization. No? Okay. Um, then more or less, if we look at the next web slide, we see that this is uh, uh, basically just an, uh, a bit more information about the third workshop because we really wanted a bit a, a bit earlier with announcing the workshop uh, than than for this uh, this second one. Uh, so some information about that. But before we start with that, um, a final uh, call out to everyone. Is there any questions about the second uh, workshop uh, or thought or anything that you want to uh, uh, bring up uh, at this moment? Maybe that's one from me. Um, yep. Like, like um, uh, I know we already have, uh, like, in total, we'll, we will be with about 20. But please think also about your colleagues who could be benefit from these kind of workshops after you've that's seen this uh, this webinar. Would be good to have, like, I think two or three more. That would be awesome, I guess. Just make a bit more PR if you think it's 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 worth for for one of your colleagues in your or somebody in your network um, or consortia. The last PR for the yep. webinar. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, then just a note for me to wrap up that part. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you, uh, to meeting you in person in in in, in Basel. Um, and then let's uh, let's quickly do a bit of information about the first workshop there too. Uh, like Mike said for the PR, uh, we need we need this practice uh, this as well. So uh, please feel free to uh, spread information about the the dates, uh, the pre announcement for the workshop date, dates and the place uh, Uppsala in Sweden. Um, 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 yeah, physically at the side life lab there with a lot of experience uh, about uh, uh, about cloud computing in the in in the life sciences, um, <clears throat> and uh, this. Uh, uh, oh yeah, the website. Um, yeah, you can you can follow the link uh, and see. Actually, they have an, a, a nice collection of a lot of different tools. Um, so this workshop uh, on the next slide is the uh, the third in the series and uh, more linked to uh, uh, to the compute platform and the tools platform. So it's uh, uh, yeah a lot more technical, I think, than uh, the first two workshops. But it is uh, one where there's a lot of synergy with a number of uh, number of projects. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this uh, this program as well. Uh, this one will be organized by, uh, as we can see on the next slide, uh, uh, by a number uh, of people. Uh, two of them are here, uh, that is Thomas and me. Uh, uh, but also uh, Ulla, Ulla uh, he's, uh, he's he's actually uh, the local uh, local host, if you like. He uh, he is involved in SciLife Lab. Uh, Ulla and I, we've known each other since uh, 2005. Uh, and uh, 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 yeah, we worked in the same lab in Uppsala uh, for, uh, for two years. Um, and uh, Andreas Avantitis, uh, who has been, uh, who's from uh, from an uh, uh, nano, uh, sorry, he was involved in nanosolvent. He was coordinator of the nanosolvent project uh, project, but he's also a uh, 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 CEO CTO of the uh, Nova Mechanics uh, company that has been providing cloud solutions uh, for a number of uh, uh, of, of toxicology projects. Um, and um, uh, yeah, and in this workshop, we're really going to talk about interoperability, fairness, documentation of all the computational toxicology uh, uh, aspects. So, if you know people in your project that uh, that might be in, uh, interested in that, please uh, provide them uh, with the dates and the uh, the registration website of the second workshop has already some more information about that third, third workshop as well. So, the same registration website, uh, there is a tab for that one as well for more information. And uh, 
for that more information a bit more there are slides uh, on the next one with the rationale so from the proposal uh, uh, and uh, and to the teams uh, and the, the likely topics uh, of the workshops there that you can use uh, to to share this in your community so the rationale here is uh, uh, we see the project open risk net they did a lot of foundational work in making uh, uh, making an interoperable uh, cloud for predictive toxicology nano solve it uh, did that for nano safety and in VHP for safety uh, we are picking up these uh, these solutions uh, and uh, continue working on that uh, uh, which um, which you can uh, ask me about uh, at some point uh, later um, and again, uh, how do we make things interoperable with, uh, with with ontology annotations and open APIs and sorts? Uh, that leads to two uh, two uh, parts for this workshop. Uh, so uh, again, we're aiming for a two day uh, workshop. So on the next slide, uh, we can see a very technical oriented thing. So how do we share computational services uh, with with uh, uh, between projects, for example, with Docker? Uh, so what is involved there? How do you archive them with Possibly RO crates. Uh, we've been in contact with uh, the RO crates community about uh, about that, uh, but that hasn't picked up enough yet. So that would make a very nice uh, nice topic. But also, how do we give enough credit for people uh, uh, doing uh, uh, yeah making things available in Docker images? So this kind of uh, um, uh, of, of research output that needs to get cited uh, as uh, as as well. So to make those things part a uh, proper part of. Uh, the sustainability of toxicology uh, uh, research output. And then the interoperability. So how do you connect all those things? And there are things like uh, Sparkle will probably pass uh, REST APIs, uh, ontology annotation, and, uh, and what's not. Um, so that is about the third workshop. Uh, any questions about uh, that one? There will be an, uh, a formal uh, uh, for formal announcement uh, of it with more information and a registration link uh, later, uh, but uh, we wanted to give the pre-announcement now. So that uh, that brings me to the end uh, of this webinar. Uh, unless I see raised hands, so with some general information, if you're not uh, registered to the uh, to the mailing list, for example, you have the link here. You have the link to our GitHub uh, location where we uh, we collect some information. Uh, again, the link to the white paper that we saw earlier. Um, uh, there's contact information and. That is actually outdated. It's not uh, Claire, uh, uh, Claire uh, who has been our uh, Elixir Hub contact, but that's Katarina that I that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so I, I need to update that uh, that that slide. Um, uh, apology for that. Um, and the general Elixir Toxicology Community website. Uh, but everyone, particularly if you have not registered to the mailing list, uh, please sign up to the mailing list, which is our uh, primary communication channel. And with that, uh, we're at the end of this uh, this this webinar. Uh, and um, uh, thank you so much for joining. And uh, if there's any other business, uh, this is a good moment to bring it up. Okay, uh, if not, uh, I'm really looking forward to the Basel meeting. Uh, thank you so much for joining, uh, joining today and uh, looking forward to meeting you in, uh, in Basel.